On the show this week, Infowars' Alex Jones talks to us about people power in America. Save Our Rights UK campaigner Louise Crefield is here to tell us about the weekend's protest in London against the continuing coronavirus measures. Former Marine Chris Thrall talks to us about the Global Veterans Alliance and why they are leading the protest tomorrow. And young campaigner Reese tells us about the new movement, Youth for Freedom. say that our next guest is a man of action and action is definitely what's needed if we're going to beat this. Chris Thrall is a former Marine turned motivational speaker and author who's raised thousands of pounds for charity by pushing his body and his mind to the limit. He's now used his considerable skills to set up the Global Veterans Alliance, an organisation of any ex-military personnel questioning narrative. Chris says the Alliance stands for one thing, freedom. Freedom of choice, freedom of information, and the freedom to decide what you put in your own body. The Global Veterans Alliance will be leading the protest tomorrow, and Chris joins us now. Chris, welcome to Right Now. Tell us why you started the Alliance and, and what your aims are. Um, oh, good question, mate. Uh, basically, a few um, service personnel, former service personnel, and, and currently serving were starting to um, put their heads above the parapet, if you excuse the, the metaphor. And it, to put it simply, it, it, this is a battle like the likes of which servicemen and women won't have fought before. And it has to be conducted in a certain way. You might hear it referred to as the, or your your listeners might hear it referred to as the spiritual battle, and it's it's not a it's not incredibly complex, but it does mean that traditional methods, um, i.e., methods that employ ego and and violence and aggression and power and all all these kind of dynamics, they won't work with with what we're all experiencing at the moment, um, Gareth. And I just felt it was important that if the veterans are going to get involved, it, it's got to set off on the right foot. Otherwise, all we're doing is playing the game, you know, the game that the elites set out for you. And of course, what do they own? Well, they own all the army. They own the whole of the police force. They own all the judges and all the law courts. Um, so this is why... As far as the Global Veterans Alliance is concerned, we've got to progress um, carefully. And I didn't want somebody else to screw it up, mate, basically. Right. Do you, do you think, is that why you think it's important for, for military personnel or ex-military personnel to, to, to speak out about what's going on? Because people have a lot of respect for you guys. I Personally, I think it all hinges on the veterans. And I, I don't mean that in any way condescendingly, um, Gareth. It, it's just that which other group globally forms such a massive um, uh, brotherhood and sisterhood, you know, w w w ready-made connections. I mean, I can, I can chat with my Marine brother in the USA tomorrow and I've never met the guy before. And yet bang we're, we're we're right on point just like that um and i think when veterans start to s understand what's going on in greater numbers what we're going to see happen is a lot will stop sitting on the fence a lot will start taking their their job more more seriously as in you know we swore an oath to protect freedom the freedom that is now like has gone out the window and people are still um, under the 
delusion delusion that everything's all right okay so what what we need to do is get those that are, that are realizing something untoward is going on and then what will what will happen is then that will have a big influence on the wider veterans community who might not be excuse the term awake but will will look at their brothers and sisters and say well hang on there's there's thousands of people here that are saying that our freedom is in jeopardy and these thousands of people can't can't be ignored no absolutely i'm, I'm, I'm sure the hundredth shot the hundredth booster will be the one that gets the freedom back though i have no doubt you did um you did something at the cenotaph earlier this year can you tell us about that yes we had our first meet um and it was just just our first get together in london of the few like-minded veterans we met in central london and we paid our respects gareth to our fallen colleagues and our forebears who throughout history gave their lives for for our freedom so take one example there was a, a chap in the first world war he's 14 years old he's a child that signed up for my freedom okay let's not get into the politics of war because you know there, there's a bigger yeah, picture there what obviously. they believed they were doing though he believed yeah that. yeah exactly yeah. mate exactly and i'm not gonna let that that kid down you know it's just it's i don't live my life that way and i know that that um veterans don't either it's just the the age-old cliche of getting people to start switching on to what what's going on and and stop except accepting the the status quo what what's your reaction been like to you guys like from from the military and from the public in general oh um well as we know in the uk the the citizens love love, love their veterans they they just do it's part of our part of our culture and since we've been in talks with the various freedom movements out there they've they've all welcomed us with open arms i think um they see that something needs to change and we will be the ones to bring it around and so yeah it's been amazing i, I just want to extend my personal gratitude to all the groups out there that have been been gathering protesting standing in the park um specifically and this is the big one not complying yeah it's just not com i mean what are you not complying with you're not complying with a 16 year old shelf stacker in lidl that might go excuse me sir what what why are you do you, you get what i'm saying it's it it's 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 what i call horse shit <laughs> you know it's it's living in fear that some spotty kid in Lidl might tell you off and it's and 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 off the back of that we 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 just excuse my French Gareth we're just shitting on our kids big style and and it's got to stop it's yeah. just got to stop I think people think that kind of that whole situation in Lidl it's always just 10 minutes and it's like 10 minutes just cover your face for 10 minutes it's like that is letting that's literally letting the vampire in the door and then it's then everything that comes as a result of that. It's not just 10 minutes. Yeah, it, it's compliance, isn't it? It's compliance with an agenda that doesn't give you information, that doesn't give you freedom of choice, um, that that expects you to accept a narrative from, from corporate billionaire and trillionaires w without questioning it, uh, you know, <laughs> A narrative that that i mean what happened to vegetables what happened to eating vegetables what happened to moderate exercise what happened to your mindfulness or, or, or your meditation what what in the in the what what religious people were called prayer what, what is it all that stuff that we were taught growing up you know drop something on the ground three second rule yeah my third second rule when i was a kid you know 
this kid's ill. Let's all go around his house so we'll we'll develop this this natural immunity. Um, you know, that's all just been wiped off the table without any any question whatsoever. It's it it's it's it doesn't border on insanity. It it is utter insanity. And um, for those of us that that lost colleagues. Uh, fighting for this freedom people like myself I mean I was 19 years old when I was on active service putting my life on the line for what what I at least believed was was freedom um, do you think these corporate trillionaires care anything about that do you think they they, they they lose sweat over all these coffins coming back from Afghanistan and and, and Iraq and such places um, it's uh you know they don't do they but but i do and my uh my fellow veterans do of course i mean you you've had a very adventurous life you've you've done military service all over the world you've worked for the triads in hong kong you've run from john o'groats to land's end which is insane to me you've done ultra marathons jumped out of planes you, you i mean you're pretty fearless you have to be to do any of those things does the situation we're in now frighten you in any way um, and, and what do you think we can do to change it? Well, I'm human like everybody else. You're very kind to, to read out some of my um, achievements, Gareth, but I, I'm more now realising that, that so long as I buy into this identity that people refer to as Chris, that I'm on to a losing battle, that that what you're looking at is a set of carbon molecules held together at a certain vibrating frequency flying through the universe. So we all are part of this great universe. And the one thing that the elites do incredibly well, and they do it from your birth and they do it through education is they sever that connection. They may get you to believe that you are an individual and that all the problems and the fear and the envy and the anger and the greed and the glut it's, all on your shoulders they own all the media so all the hollywood all, all the television studios so they're really good um the music industry so they're really good at, at, at cementing this into your psyche to get you to think you're an independent unit and then of course how do they control you well they control you through fear by telling you you're not this good you're, you you know you got this to worry about this guy said this about you your skin is the wrong color or it's the right color this week but it's the wrong color neck and all this nonsense and what i do to win what what is referred to as the spiritual battle is i stop thinking as chris and i think as the greater universe and uh silly example but if these molecules that make up this body they've always been here gareth haven't they they've been here since time the dawn of time they'll be here for all eternity well if if you're here for eternity you can't worry about anything can you you can't be scared of anything because you you'd have to be scared of everything so this is just a small um sort of insight into how we need to proceed we need to get rid of this fear and you're not going to do it if you take it all on your shoulders. You, 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 you have to understand that we're all part of, of something much bigger and I'm only human. I'm like everybody else. Um, I've got all the stresses and strains, but I'm learning to offload it. Um, because the, as I say, there's a, there's a, there's a challenge here, call it a battle, whatever. I don't like to use military terms because the Global Veterans Lance, we're peaceful, we're law abiding. We understand that the law was written for us, the individual, not, not writ written for corporate trillionaires. Um, and we, we will progress in this way. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as, as, as I'm making sense. Then, yeah, because they've tried to divide us from the beginning, um, and that's the only way that they can win is is by division. There's so much division within the kind of COVID narrative. It's it's insane that you kind of I know what political persuasion you are by what you think about wearing a mask, and that that to me is insane. 
Is that kind of what, because obviously you guys are leading the march in London on Saturday, is, is that why you're doing it? It's a show of unity for everyone, you know, to come together? Yes, I mean, obviously, it, it, you, 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 I can only say it as I see it, Gareth, you know, I, I, I live, worked and traveled now in 85 countries across all seven continents. I'm probably, and I don't mean this to big myself up, because like I said, I'm just a set of carbon molecules, but this ever-changing set of carbon molecules, I've, I've just been in every sort of weird and wonderful experience I think you can come up with, like you said, even working as a doorman for the, the Hong Kong triads. And it's like I've learned a few things over the years, you know, I've, I've, I've learned a few things and I, I would say that the marching and the protesting per se isn't the way that you, you win this thing because again, you, it, whenever you play into the hands of the elites, you play their game with their police force on their streets and um, call, uh, you, you can almost sort of think of it as cre uh, you know a protest almost creates division in itself because the people that don't get why people are on that protest are then almost like afraid in themselves uh, so i we we're not marching for that reason we're marching to show people that it's all right to question the narrative and we're marching to reassure the public that your veterans the people that you paid for for your safety, we are here and we're good to our oath, unlike our gutless, cowardly politicians who sold you all out. And we're not going to do that. that that's the primary um, importance of being in London on the 30th. It is to, it's to show unity. It's to raise awareness. It's to for us to gather, to gather numbers. But the actual the actual winning of our freedom back will it will have to be thought through really carefully and it will be in terms of exercising our law our human law common law it will be through non-compliance with um things shall we say that are just not in our interest yeah um yeah. we have we have a duty to to disobey tyranny i think it's as simple as that but um but thanks so much for talking to us chris and i'll see i'll see you on saturday i hope i hope we, we get to run into each other that'd be great yes and thanks um thanks for having us on the show gareth really appreciate it oh, the pleasure's are mate thank you thank you for tuning in thanks to all my guests it feels tough right now I have conversations with people every day and some are very frightened. But as I said at the top of the show, it feels more desperate than anything. You wouldn't buy a car off a salesman that showed such levels of aggressive coercion. Just buy it! That wouldn't make you buy the car. That would make you more steadfast in your decision not to. They underestimate all of you. And that is an incredible disadvantage for them. They don't realise it either because they can't relate to the courage and fortitude that you have. They can't relate because they have none of these things. They offered you donuts for crying out loud. And so we stand together like this in Trafalgar Square. We are a wall, an impenetrable force that stands for each other. We show humanity. They can mandate what they want, but a mandate only has power if the people comply. I can mandate for the producer Gemma to make me a full English breakfast, but if she refuses, then what does my mandate actually mean? Because I'm still hungry. And there's a lot of people that have been dining at the top table for a long, long time at the expense of all of us that could do with missing a few meals. It's coming. We'll see you tomorrow.